Hello, I'm your host, Gro Barzar, and welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science. Our top story comes from the world of medicine. A study resulting from a collaboration of three universities may have found a weakness in the HIV virus. Surprisingly, the head researchers on this project were actually chemists. They statistically analyzed a large database of HIV proteins. What they discovered was that a certain segment of RNA wasn't very tolerant to mutation. This is important because a major obstacle in developing drugs or vaccines is HIV's ability to rapidly mutate. But the particular segment they found could not mutate much without collapsing the virus's structure, making it a promising target for research. Our next story comes from the world of technology. A team at Hardy University has developed technologies that greatly improve a computer's ability to recognize three-dimensional shapes. Humans are very good at recognizing complex 3D shapes, such as a hand, no matter what position it's in. This is much harder for computers, which usually require a lot of prior information about the shape. The new methods developed simply turn a 3D shape into a 2D pattern using long-established equations in physics to simulate heat distribution over the shape. This allows the computer to generate its own model of the object. These developments have many applications, mostly in robotics. And from the world of nanotechnology, a researcher from the University of Strathclyde says that carbon nanotubes could be essential for meeting the population's freshwater needs. A very promising way of producing fresh water is desalination, but there are several problems with it. Mainly that the reverse osmosis requires the production of great pressure. But computer simulations show that carbon nanotube membranes are around 20 times more permeable than current ones used in desalination. These new membranes could have chemicals added to them to further repel salt ions, making them even more effective. And finally, from the world of evolution. Experiments done at the University of Minnesota were able to coax single-celled yeast into becoming multicellular. They did this by briefly putting yeast populations in a centrifuge and removing the top layer in the test tube. These conditions favored bulkier organisms, causing the yeast to retain their budding daughter cells. Within two months, the yeast were forming spiky snowflake-like structures. This experiment demonstrated a key moment in evolution. Well, that's it for this week. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links down below.